Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to start by saying thank you. Um, thank you for thank you. Uh, speaking with me over the last few months, for being in Action Just to Paint at Whitechapel Gallery and for talking to us all today. The show is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, and I thought we should start at the beginning. Um, so could you tell me, tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, what your parents were like? I know they were very encouraging. Sure. I want to thank uh, Tal and Jeremy for having me here today. And they have been phenomenal. They really have. This has been a very receptive uh, experience for me. And they didn't miss a thing, nothing, from any point of view. And this has been quite enjoyable, quite enjoyable. And I want to thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only if you want. I, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, graduated from Howard University in 1965. And I started painting when I was four years old. My parents, my mother in particular, gave me paint, gave my brother paint and watercolor paint. And we painted, you know, we kept on, kept on. And through the encouragement of my parents, I paint. The, my parents were the best parents in the world. They were very encouraging and extremely supportive. They supported me after I had children. They still bought paint. You know, I, my father asked me in the 11th grade what I wanted to be, and I said I wanted to go into art. My father said, I don't know about making money there now. You know, and he understood better than I. <laughs> But I grew to understand what that was all about. But at any rate, the, uh, he became very much aware of what I wanted to do. And my mother became aware of my use of color, particularly because she was one person who was very much interested in color. We grew up on, or I grew up on Dillard uh, University's campus, which is in New Orleans and at Southern University's campus. My um, parents, Dr. George W. Snowden and Mrs. Jesse B. Snowden, my mother taught at Dillard and at Southern, taught English. And um, she was, uh, an, uh, became an expert on Shakespeare and she studied here. The um, Stratford upon the Avon <laughs> uh, years ago, years ago when she uh, studied uh, Shakespeare. The, um, my mother was a, a person who enjoyed color, who enjoyed art. In our house, well, uh, back in, in the 50s, was a house that was full of color. Now today, people wouldn't think that's a lot of color. But then, that, that, that was a lot of color. And we had a lot of, um, of prints of, of famous artists, and she was particularly fond of Picasso's Blue Period. <laughs> what else did I? <laughs> <laughs> How was Howard? What was Howard like at the time you studied there? Howard was undoubtedly had the best teachers, African American teachers in the country. James A. Porter. Lois Maylou Jones, uh, David Driscoll, and James Wells. Those people knew their craft, understood their craft, and they, they taught the students their craft. They taught with um, an emphasis on how to present yourself, how to be real to art, to art. I mean, they, they put art into your head and they let you know if you were not a person who was desirable in the art field. So not everybody graduated from <laughs> Howard University. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it was, uh, they treated you like, 
well, these, you're my children. I'm gonna, gonna help you. I know Lois Jones got me my first job teaching at Delaware State College. And um, James uh, Porter got me a scholarship to Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. And I went there, and then 50 years later, I went back. And uh, it, it had changed somewhat. But I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed painting there both times, both times. And um, Howard University represented a milestone for many African-American people, many. And uh, I'm very proud to have graduated from there because there was such an emphasis on understanding your craft, mastering your craft. That was, but you know, the, uh, there was more emphasis placed on that than getting your work out. There was not the emphasis on pushing your work out. The emphasis was placed on making it, being true to what art is, not to shortcut or cut it, but to make sure that you knew what you were doing and you understood how to do it, how the materials worked, and, and what you wanted to say. You had to think in terms of, of what, what, what is it that you're trying to get across? What is it that you want to say about anything in, in terms of paint or, or woodcut or whatever? And you mentioned that you had your first teaching job. Did you enjoy teaching? Did you take the same approach to teaching? Of course, <laughs> of course. You know, and I... Uh, used their class outlines when I taught because they were so good. And at least I thought they were, and they, and they, they certainly were. And they serviced people other than myself as a student. They serviced my students. And it was, uh, and I gave them all credit for it. You know, the, and it was, uh, they had an influence on, on generations after me. I'm not much of a talker, you see that. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. Right. Okay. Um, maybe let's get more specific uh, and talk about M Street, um, where you still live. Can you tell us how you found the house there and what the house meant to you, means to you? Well, I was an uh, artist in residence at the University of Sydney from a man from uh, London whose name is John E.T.C. White. He's deceased now. He's an art historian, a well-known art historian, who became uh, head of the department at Johns Hopkins University. I applied to Johns Hopkins University as PhD, in the PhD program in uh, art history. And I got a recommendation from James Porter who said, well, Sylvia's a painter, but if she wants to go into art history, I support her. And so John White let me see this, and he looked at my painting, and he thought about it, and he says, are you really sure you want to go into art history? Seems like you really want to go into painting. And so he sort of said, let's, 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 let's wait for a little while. And so we did, and he was responsible for getting me a 16 month stay in Sydney, Australia at the University of Sydney. And, um, and I'm glad I stayed into, into uh, painting. You know, I enjoy it much more than I personally would art history, though I enjoy art history. And when you came back from Sydney, then you needed to find some. Oh, you're there. talking about my house, right? <laughs> the, um, the, um, I had two children then, and we were going to live, decided we were going to live in Washington, D.C., because my parents lived there. And I was divorced then, and I needed my parents. My children needed my parents. So we, I had to find a house that was large enough to support my children and large enough to support my practice as a painter. And I did, and I, it was on M Street, Northwest, and that's where I still live. It's, it's a large house, 
It's a large house, but, I, but I've been there for a long time, and I paint all the time, and I need more space now. <laughs> what was the neighborhood like when you moved there? The neighborhood was, like was all black, with one white man when I moved there. <laughs> we lived in a, a, the block that I live on has, um, it has 86 different residences in one block. And those houses were built for wealthy white people who escaped <coughs> to the suburbs. And the um, people who bought the houses turned them into rooming houses. So there were many people there who were, who rented there. Now it's gone, they have, it's all white now. It's, um, except three of us, it's all white to where People have um, cut the houses, the houses are large, very large, and they cut the houses up in the condominiums, and people live there now, but they're all white now. And they wonder why I'm there. You know, <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> but the people uh, that lived there when you first moved there, are the people that we see in these paintings, right? Yeah, let me explain this to you. These, peop these paintings have names to them. They, they I use the names for the people who lived on M Street. These are not <coughs> portraits. They have nothing to do with these particular people. They're just means as an identification, just an identification. These paintings are about all of us, about human beings, about our struggle in life, about our understanding that we are from the earth and we will go back to the earth. And that no matter what race you are, what sex you are, it doesn't matter about that, what gender, doesn't matter about that, but, but we will go back. And there's a constant battle about going back to, because we don't really know where we're going, you know, after we leave here. And there's a fear for that. And um, that's what these, these paintings are really about, about all of us. Now, some people have said that I paint females because I am a female. That's simply not true. What happens is that females have breasts, so that means there are two spaces that I can use in a painting. Okay, and males have a penis, one space. So I, I, I gear myself to using those two spaces more so because it becomes very interesting for me. Now, in these particular paintings, I was very much interested in understanding and exhibiting my skill as far as understanding the proportion of the figure to the masonite. All of this is on masonite. And I was very much interested in the shapes that the negative space occupies so that they become just as interesting to me as the shapes of the figures. So it was a, it was a test for me. After you've been painting for a long time, you said, well, I do, set myself up for exhibiting to me what skills, what I can do with space, what I can, what I can accomplish. And I, I, I like the tactile texture, and I make use of tactile texture in pastel paint, thick paint, and the paint is getting thicker. I just enjoy, I enjoy the feel of paint, and it's, it's, um, some people say it's this, this barbarly sculpture, low barbarly sculpture. It is really not, not uh, at all just paint, but low barbarly sculpture. The negative space also does something, um, where you, before you said that they're not portraits, but so keeping the background blank removes any narrative or any idea of who the person is or description so that it becomes about the figure and the feeling in the figure. Of course, and it's not, it's, for this particular series, it, the interfering with the negative space 
would interfere with the figure. And so this now, you, <coughs> excuse me, you see the figure point blank, and you only have to deal with the figure. You don't have to deal with anything in the negative space. You only have to deal with the figure. And I, I think I'm right in saying most of the time, nearly all the time, you paint lone figures, single figures. Yes, figure. yes. Could you talk about that? Well, it's, it's my interest in, in the individual, the individual that will represents all, that will represent all of us as, as far as, um, as what we experience. You know, as what we experience as human beings. It is my, my I, 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 I want to paint about all of us. I don't want to paint, I'm not interested in painting anymore in painting about what happens to a particular group. I'm interested in painting from a larger scale about what happens to all of us. How did the people of M Street respond to? Well, everybody knew I was a painter. I did not, I did not, did not, um, I had no relationship with the people on M Street. I had no relationship other than to say hello, uh, good day, or whatever. You know, I just, there was a difference in background, so there was, there was nothing really to say. But my kids, kids play with kids anywhere. So my kids played with everybody. And so when the trucks would come by, and the trucks would come by the front of my house, and the people would see the trucks bring out the paintings, and on the backs of the paintings, there's the names, and people would say, oh, there I am, oh, there I am. And I really do wish that I had a film of that because I believe that people should be represented no matter what their background is. That, that you know, we don't need to see Trump 24 hours a day. You know, we need to see, you know, Joe Blow somewhere. So, and I was, I was, I was proud of that. I was proud of that. Can we talk a bit about process? About so, do you do preparatory sketches? No, no. Do no. you know? I am a figure painter, and I, in our undergraduate school, I took we took uh, four hours a week life drawing undergrad for two years, and we had to take anatomy classes. And then in graduate school, I took two classes, two, I'm sorry, two hours of, of life drawing. So I understand the figure for me. I understand it. I understand what it looks like. I understand the anatomy of it. I understand how I want to control it in order to get an emotion across. I understand that. So there's no need for me to make sketches. There's simply there's, there's no need. Yeah. And how did you come to decide? I was wondering about the people that you were painting, so you didn't sketch them. How did no. you come to decide who you were painting and how? It doesn't, I was not painting them. Uh -huh. I wasn't, had nothing to do with them as people. I just used their names. They had nothing to do with them as people. It had to do with all of us as people, not particularly them. That, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned that it's masonite. Yes. And you use oil and acrylic and oil pastel. Yeah, I, I am an oil painter. And my children, when they were, you know, firstborn could not stand the, the odor of turpentine. So, and then when I went to Australia, if I painted in oil, it would take forever for it to dry and I couldn't get it back here. So I had to learn acrylic. Acrylic and oil paint are two different things completely. Oil paint is natural of the earth, you know, and you can paint into it and you can work into it. Acrylic is plastic, and it, it, it dries fast, and it has no odor. And you can do some things in it, but you, 
I cannot work into it like you can with oil paint. You can start something with oil paint today and come back tomorrow and change that area. With, with acrylic, it's already dry, so you can't work into it. So therefore, you see in certain areas, there's the use of oil pastel to make up for the fact that you can't, or I can't, work into, nobody can, work into, <laughs> into the uh, acrylic. Can't do it. So the pastel's on top of the acrylic? Yes, yes. Mm. And how do you make your decisions with color? Your use of color is amazing. How do you, is that intuitive or? I don't know about intuitive. You know, I don't want to go there with intuitive because people misunderstand that. It's not a point of intuitive. It's a point of something that I have learned to express myself. It's not, it's a learned, it's not just I feel like doing this so I'm gonna feel this color. It's not that, it's something that I've learned that this color expresses something within me. Mm -hmm. And I make use of a lot of red, a lot of red. Red is for me the, you know, life. And I like using red. I paint in series, meaning that there's something that I want to say. And I, just like one paints, uh, one writes a book. You have different chapters in the book. So with my paintings, one painting represents a book. I mean, I'm sorry, represents a chapter. And so I go on, and when I finished writing that particular series, then the series ends, and I rest for a while and start another. I paint all the time. I'm only interested, really, quite frankly, for myself, my children and paint. I'm not too much interested. I mean, I listen to the news, of course, but I mean, I'm not too much uh, active in anything else for my children and paint. I have to make up my mind to, to understand that I cannot, I personally cannot involve myself in every little thing. You know, it's just, it's just, I cannot stretch myself that far. I, and I don't, I don't have an interest in doing that. You know, I have an interest in my children. I love my children. I love to see them grow. You know, of course, there are pains like everybody else kids are. You know, but anyway, and of course, you can get, I get, um, you know, a little upset sometimes when a painting is not going the right way or the way that I want it to go. So, uh, but it's, 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 it's for me, for my life, it's rewarding. And I keep saying for me because some people will, when I talk and I don't say that, well, you don't do it this way or you don't do it that way or somewhat, you know, so I'm making sure you understand this is me. Not, not whatever you think. You think what you want to think, but that, that has nothing to do with me. I wanted to ask you about abstract expressionism, mm -hmm. um, because I, I know that your work is often talked about in relation to that kind of movement, um, but I don't necessarily see, I see you as an expressionist, but a figurative painter primarily. Um, so I wanted to ask your thoughts on that. Yeah, abstract expressionism was popular at one point. You know, very popular. And abstract expressionism is just subdivided into three areas, action painting, structure, uh, structural painting, and symbolic. I make use of, if you want to tie me into abstract expressionism, <coughs> you know, writing about painting is one thing over here. You know, that's over there and doing the paintings over here, that they're just two different things, okay? So you wanna write about it, then fine, go on and write whatever you think. But the painting itself has nothing to do with what, the often, with what you write, nothing. Nothing whatsoever what to do. So, many, so my painting is more closely associated with structural abstract expressionism, which is based on the structure of the human being. And I prefer to use, if that has to be, if you have to put it in a cubbyhole, I mean, if you have to talk about it that way, I prefer to use just plain expressionism, 
where, where I'm in, in painting about the insides of people. I'm painting about the, 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 the fact that we have one common goal, and that is to make it through this life. We don't have anything else to make it through this life. And how you make it through is not, doesn't have anything to do with what I paint. You know, it's just, it's just the person itself. Now, I place a lot of emphasis on fingers and on hands because we all use our hands as expressions. We all use our hands as punctuation marks. We all do. Some of us do it more than others. And that is more clarity to what we're talking about, to what we're saying, than words. Words are large and, and somebody else's expression, and we're making them ours. But our hands, our hands are our own. And our hands come right from the head, head to the heart, right out to the fingers. Do you see? So that's our own expression. It emphasizes that it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it, it, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't um, confine itself to, to the big idea of words. That leads really nicely into uh, the last question I wanted to ask, which was, I read something that you said that was really beautiful. I thought about how in Western culture, because it's younger than other cultures, we haven't married thought and feeling. Um, and that I see that as what you're doing in your work, you're bringing those two things together. And I try, I truly try. Do you know, depending on how, what's popular, you know, last year it was popular to say, I think this, I think that, I think that, negating what we feel. Now this year it's popular to say, I feel this, I feel this, I feel this, negating what we think. Other cultures marry the two, so you think and feel at once. But, he, but in this in our Western culture, which I'm a product of, you think one thing over here, and you feel one thing at another time. And we don't marry the two. We do not. We do not. And you can see it even in the vocabulary, in the way we talk. Our speech, well, I think this. I think and then they'll say, oh, wait a minute, I also feel. Well, let me go to the other extreme. I feel this, I feel this. And then there's never the two. The two other cultures is the two. And in this culture, you have to go to school to understand what art is. You have to be taught what art is. In other cultures, the art goes with the people. The people understand what you're making. It's part of the culture. You don't have to go in and listen to somebody else's interpretation of it. <laughs> You're looking at me in a skeptical way. 